Hello and welcome back, I am the Irish guy and right now, watching a Simpsons episode these days, ah, uh, it's a bit like eating a cookie made by a blind pensioner in the bathroom. Sure, there is a chance that yeah, it'll taste like a really nice biscuit, but what's more likely is that you're going to be coughing up chunks of wet toilet paper. Because officially, there are way more bad episodes of the Simpsons than there are good ones, meaning that if you were to pop on an episode at random, then yeah, you're most likely going to spend the next 20 minutes debating whether or not to shove a fork in your eye. I mean, I sat down the other day to watch an episode of season 33. Oh, oh good Christ. It was like revisiting that old friend you haven't seen in a while, right? I mean, when you left them, sure, they were in good shape. You know, they had a job, they had a family and a wife. Great. But now they're living under a bridge and eating heroin off a dog's stomach. This was just depressing because The Simpsons seasons 1 to 10 were impeccable. Arguably the greatest TV show of all time. Oz, he had comedy and heart. It was genius. But just like Jim Carrey, that was something which should have been left back in the 90s. I'm sexy and sexy. And tonight I'm having cream corn and strained peaches. Ozzy, look at him. He looks like if Willem Dafoe had just stopped showering for seven years. Oh, he looks like a bulimic Santa Claus. But anyway, The Simpsons was utter brilliance back in the 90s, but nowadays, I'm sorry, it's a TV show which makes me feel like chewing out my own eyes with a toothbrush. You know what's so depressing about The Simpsons is that 21st century Simpsons Anything goes. Nothing is too low for this TV show. Good grace, I remember when these were headlines. Jedward to star on The Simpsons? X Factor stars Jedward to appear in The Simpsons. As spokesman confirmed, we are taking a look at the boys. We love anything Irish. We set up a whole show there last year. They are certainly charming and good looking fellows. <sighs> now, unless the episode involved itchy and scratchy, blinding each one in the eye with a kitchen scissors, then no! I would rather pour acid in my weedy mix and subject myself to that. First of all, the previous year, Homer spoofed the life of Susan Boyle. This show is so lacking in any morsel of creativity that literally they just write for the contents of Hello Magazine to just mention anything that's topical. This is the cartoon version of Scary Movie. <laughs> By the way, if you agree, if you also agree that The Simpsons right now is utter garbage, and really, it's just sad to watch, then go on, slap that big fat subscribe button if you agree. Absolute legends. Anyway, back into the video. Whereas during the golden age of The Simpsons, sure they bring in guest stars, but they would use them in a clever way. Like Dustin Hoffman playing Lisa's teacher, or Michael Jackson playing some fat guy in an asylum. Oh wait, that's right, we're not allowed to enjoy that episode anymore, despite it being one of the best episodes in the whole goddamn show. But here instead, new Simpsons have just shoved in the likes of Russell Brand, Justin Bieber, even goddamn Ronaldo. Fry Smoke, they devoted an entire episode to Lady Gaga. Excuse me while my mouth fills up with puke. I mean, here are some recent episodes. Krusty bringing out an all-female reboot of Itchy and Scratchy. Fat Tony becomes Maggie's godfather. Grandpa falls victim to a phone scam. Bart and Homer become social media celebrities. I mean, the stories these days, I mean, who honestly cares about the origin story to comic book guy or Gil? I mean, look at this episode description. Sarah Wiggum is more than she seems. Sarah Wiggum. What next? You're gonna devote an entire episode to the bastard cat? Todd blames God for his mother's death and rejects his faith, so Ned sends him to live with the Simpsons, hoping they can scare him into believing in God again. That sounds like the most depressing thing I've ever heard in my life. Grieving child can't get over mother, so he tells his eight-year-old boy to go live with the man who inadvertently caused her death. What is this? Marge implements a limit on screen time for the whole family, only to realize she's the one addicted to screens. Oh, uh, what a thrilling episode that must be. Homer is worried that he is no longer the cool parent after Marge, Bart, and Lisa become foodies. What? What does that even mean? I mean, do you remember that god awful couch gag where the Simpsons all just sing that nasty TikTok song? I'm sorry, but seeing Ralph Wiggum and Nelson Muntz dancing around and singing to Kesha, this was the moment where the Simpsons officially died. Whose idea was this? Look at the state of this. Bart Simpson dressed up as Flo Rida. It's mind-numbingly stupid. I mean, what goes on in that writer's room? Whereas before, it was filled with ingenious comedic legends like Sam Simon, James L. Brooks, Conan O'Brien, but now, these so-called plots could honestly be dreamt up by someone who's got brain made of mashed potato. The Simpsons have ruined everything. And, uh... <sighs> It gets worse. Marge comes to the conclusion that Grandpa is a closeted homosexual who is forced to be heterosexual throughout most of his life. Homer and Marge set Grandpa up with Wayland Smithers, but the plan fails and Mr. Burns arrives and scares Smithers off. 
What? Grandpa Simpson, the guy written as an uncompromising, gruff, blue collar slob, is actually a secret member of the LGBT. I don't understand. In classic Simpsons, this man was vying with Mr. Burns for the attention of Marge Simpson's mother. Now, it's the exact same story, except these two pensioners are now fighting over a 40 year old man. Oh, it, it just hurts my brain. This doesn't make any sense. These writers were out of ideas 10 years ago, because back in May 2011, the season finale actually asked the fans to vote online for whether Ned Flanders and Edgar Cabobble would wind up together. I'm sorry, what? Vote online! This isn't the goddamn Facebook survey. This is supposed to be the greatest TV show on the planet. Well, and I'm sorry, anyone who still watches Modern Day Simpsons, let alone takes the time to vote for a plotline in the internet, then clearly you're the type of 40-year-old man who still gets breastfed in his mother's attic. I'm sorry, but if you find yourself laughing at any joke written by a Simpsons writer in 2022, then honestly, I can only assume you were once the subject of a lobotomy. Or at the very least, you want to puncture your brain by shoving a toothbrush in your ear. I mean, this what happens when a TV show drags on for 30 plus years? They just rehash the same tired, withered plot over and over and over and over and over and over again. Christ, Bart Simpson has apparently had nine different girlfriends. I'm sorry, what? He's 10 years old. He is a prepubescent child. What sort of sick middle-aged perverts are scripting this garbage? Back in the Golden Age Simpsons, he was written as a child who had an unrequited crush on his babysitter. But now, oh no, in season 18, he had a girlfriend who was 16 years of age. That's, th th that's a crime. Th that's actually a crime. And oh Christ, let's... Let's see what the plot of this was then, shall we? At the courthouse, she reveals that she is pregnant. Bart thought he knocked her off, causing him to tell his real age and flee to no avail. However, Darcy confided to him that he couldn't be the father because pregnancy isn't the result of kissing but an act of intercourse. What? What is this utter filth? Can I remind everyone, he is 10 years old. Why are we trying to write him as some sort of mini Russell Brand? I don't care that he's voiced by a nearly 70 year old grandmother. He is still a 10 year old character. Pregnancy! I'm sorry, but if you enjoyed the storyline, I can only assume you've also got your name stamped on some sort of register. And apparently, apparently Bart's most recent girlfriend was the daughter of Superintendent Chalmers. Again, this complete lack of originality almost makes me feel apple crumble sick in my throat. This show utterly ruins the characters. Christ love, Barney Gumble was a hilariously dark representation of alcoholics. But now recently, he spent three seasons being sober and just drinking chai lattes in Moe's. Three seasons of bland nothingness. It's a TV show so desperate to remain culturally relevant and in the spotlight, glorifying celebrity that they will do anything to grab ratings. Instead of hiring new writers, trying to come up with actual jokes, you know, proper hours of brainstorming, Instead of just dreaming up jokes on the bus. Oh, suddenly they invented worldwide media hype that the Simpsons were going to kill off a major character in the new season. Which major Simpsons character will be killed off in the show's 2014 season premiere? Suddenly, people were speculating that this is going to be a Game of Thrones style bloodbath. And what better way to put this show out of its misery than, well, I don't know. Sure, have someone drown most of his lack in a toilet bowl. Yes, shove Reverend Lovejoy into a cow slaughterhouse. Force Apu to drink three cups of rat poison. Why not? Why not just put these lazy character shadows out of their misery? Instead, no, they didn't actually have the courage to kill off any major character. Instead, it was just Krusty's dad. I didn't even know he had a dad. This show will do anything for ratings. I mean, Family Guy used to be a rival, vying for attention on the telly, but Christ above, the Simpsons are in such a zombie state of death that they actually agreed to sign up and appear in a Family Guy episode. They had to beg Family Guy to promote them. The Simpsons writers actually had to go begging to Seth MacFarlane, someone who I'm sure during the late 90s, every writer in the Simpsons office looked down on as some sort of annoying child. And again, seven years ago, there was more desperate, tragic hype in the media. Bart Simpson to be killed the next season on The Simpsons. The Simpsons maniac sideshow Bob will finally kill Bart Simpson in a new episode. <sighs> Homer and Marge to separate on The Simpsons. These headlines are just the equivalent of a bunch of desperate, lazy writers out of ideas who are now just screaming, oh! It's just pitiful and sad. I mean, as for the episode where Bob kills Bart. Right then, let's have a look. Completing his life's purpose, Bob rejoices in a song, posts a photo of himself with Bart's corpse on Fiend Book, wears Bart as a backpack, drinks Bart's brain matter with wine, and uses Bart's mouth as a golf hole. From there, Sideshow Bob gets on with his life and ends up lecturing at Springfield University. W what? W what has The Simpsons become? Brutally mutilating a 10-year-old boy. This is 
not The Simpsons. And just when you think they couldn't have sold out any more, oh, The Simpsons have recently linked up with Disney Plus. Meaning The Simpsons have just done a crossover where Homer shares a pint with Goofy and Barney has to perform the Heimlich maneuver on Donald Duck. I wish I was joking. I'm sorry, here we've got Homer trying to enter the same nightclub as Winnie the Pooh. Honestly, no, this, it's horrific. Why is Julius Hibbert doing shots with Tinker Bell? I'm sorry, Carl and Barney knocking back beer with Jafar and Darth Vader. Mo arguing with one of Snow White's dwarves. Lisa, I, I need to sit down because this is revolting. We've got Lisa shamelessly singing a song about how great Disney is, standing beside Mowgli and Wally. -E. Again, The Simpsons always used to be brilliant with the celebrity cameos. Back in their early years, like their genius use of James Woods as this slightly psychotic version of himself in the earlier seasons. You know, back when he was working at the Quickie Mart. Well, look at this! That whole mirage of James Wood has been chucked in the bin. Because guess what? That's one of his Disney characters stuffed in Lisa's song. Listen, I'm not asking for Emmy Award winning writing here, alright? I realize after 30 years things can go stale. But maybe, just maybe, don't have Mole Man in the same scene as one of the bears of Monsters Inc. Is that really too much to ask? And modern day Simpsons. They can't stop getting involved in controversy either. Don't have a cow. The Simpsons response to Apu racism row criticized as toothless. Yeah, here we are. Lisa and Mar try to deal with the controversy over Apu's portrayal by telling the world, don't have a cow and staring down the lens. For the first time in 30 years, actually breaking the fourth wall. No, this isn't the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Stop looking at the audience. And, and I'm sorry. Why does an eight-year-old girl have a photo of the local shopkeeper beside her bed anyway? Listen, The Simpsons movie was tired and pointless and that was 15 years ago and they're still making new episodes. Apparently the utter arrogance of The Simpsons makers right now, they don't care about the quality, they just want to reach 1,000 episodes just to say they did it. Which means 12 more seasons of utter garbage polluting the TV. 12 more seasons. Meaning that all the voice actors will be in their goddamn 70s. Price of Yardley Smith is currently 57 years old and she's been voicing an 8 year old girl since 1989. Are you not sick of it? Are these voice actors not bored at the utter lazy writing they have to act out every week? Ozzy, to stop The Simpsons existing, you just have to follow the advice they gave you in a treehouse of horror during the classic golden age. Just don't look. That's the only way to make The Simpsons go away. Just don't look. Honestly, The Simpsons right now, it's putrid, it's horrific, it's horrible to watch. Just let it die. Anyway, that's what it is. Sorry, I had to get off my chest, all right? Because honestly, The Simpsons in the 90s was the greatest TV show ever made. Look at it now. It's honestly just sad. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know what do you think, all right? Let me know your comments in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.